Hi everyone, in this video we'll be looking at how we can interpret fragments in the mass spectrum to help us confirm the identity of a compound. Just a recap about mass spectrometry. Mass spectrometry is a spectroscopic technique which measures a molecule's mass to charge ratio or the m to z ratio. Interpreting the mass spectrum can provide us with data about the size of a molecule, such as its molecular mass, and we can use this molecular mass in order to help us identify the number of carbon atoms that are in the molecule. The way that the mass spectrometer works is that a heater will vaporize the sample. This is then ionized by an electron gun, which removes electrons from that vaporized sample in order to produce positive ions. Usually, ionization will break the molecule into different fragments. These fragments, which are created from the ionization of the sample molecule, will then produce their own signals in the mass spectrum. By recognizing and interpreting the fragmentation patterns which arise as a result of this fragmentation, we can utilize that information and confirm the structure of a suspected compound. The way that we can determine a molecular mass of a fragment is by looking at the m to z ratio. This is because, like the molecule's molecular ion peak, it will provide us with a direct indication of the molecular mass of the fragment. So for example, let's say that we lost a methyl group. Here we have an ion of the molecule pentane. The carbon-carbon bond between carbons 1 and 2 is then cleaved in order to form the C4H9 fragment and also the CH3 fragment. This methyl group is going to have a m to z ratio of 15 because the molar mass is going to be equal to 12 for carbon plus 1, 2, 3, which equals to 15. So let's look at some example fragmentation patterns. The first molecule we are going to look at is pentane. Pentane has a molecular ion peak that is at 72 but we can also see three other large peaks. The first peak we look at is here, at 29. This signal in the mass spectrum is indicative of the C2H5 fragment because it has a molecular mass of 29 grams per mole for this fragment. This is 24 for the two carbons, plus five from the hydrogen, which equals to 29. Looking at our molecule of pentane, we can actually tell that the way that we created this fragment was formed by cleaving the carbon to carbon bond between carbons 2 and carbons 3. As a result of the cleavage, there is also the formation of this C3H7 fragment, and that's indicated by the base peak signal, which is at 43 mass to charge ratios. We can also have a look at the compound ethanol. Ethanol has a base peak at 31, which corresponds with the formation of the C2OH fragment. This fragment has a molecular mass of 31, which is consistent with the mass spectrum, and is formed from the cleavage of the CC bond that exists in the middle of the ethanol. However, there's also a peak at 45. This is just one mass to charge ratio less than the molecular ion peak, and that must be because the fragment is produced from the removal of a hydrogen. The most likely fragment which is going to be produced is going to be this one, where the OH bond in the hydroxy group is going to be cleaved. This is because in our OH functional group, the O has a higher electronegativity and is more electron withdrawing which leads to an increase in the acidity of the adjacent hydrogen. So now we're looking at propanone, and previously we discussed a peak of 15 on the mass spectrum, which usually is indicative of a methyl group. There is a peak at 15, which we see on the mass spectrum, for propanone. So what we want to do is we want to check whether or not we're able to form a methyl group as a result of fragmentation. Looking at our molecule, the way that we can form this methyl group is by either cleaving the CC bonds in position 1 of either side. And so the cleavage between here leads to the formation of these two fragments, the first fragment being the methyl fragment, and the second fragment being consistent as the base peak of 43. C2H3O has a molar mass of 43, which is consistent with the fragment which is produced as a result of this fragmentation. For propanoic acid, we see a couple of large signals. A common one for carboxylic acids or alkanoic acids is a signal at 45. This is because this is an indication of the CHO2 fragment, which is equivalent to cleavage of the carboxylic acid functional group. Cleavage of the CO bond in addition to the cleavage of the carboxylic acid group will lead to further fragmentation which produces a CO fragment. That has a molar mass of 28 grams per mole and produces the signal 28 in mass to charge ratios on the mass spectrum. The final peak of interest beyond the molecular ion peak is this one here, which is at 57 charge to mass ratios. This is a direct result of the cleavage of the bond between carbons 3 and 4, which will also therefore produce a methyl group. And a methyl does produce a signal 
albeit it is rather weak on the mass spectrum. So we focus on the correlating fragment, which has the mass to charge ratio of 57. That is a C3H5O2 fragment which is produced. Esters can produce a variety of signals as they contain two oxygens, which are electron withdrawing. We similarly see cleavage next to the oxygen atoms in the alcohols for the same reason. If the bond between the alcohol section, which is this section here, and the carboxylic acid section, which is over here, of the ester is cleaved, we'll see iron peaks for this methyl group, CH3O, and also this propanoic group, C3H5O. These molar masses were equal to 31 and 57. The other case is that cleavage occurs on the other side of the carbonyl carbon, between this CC bond. That is going to leave us with C2H5 and C2H3O2 ions. These are consistent with the mass to charge ratios of 29 and 59. Our last case that we're going to be looking at is for the amine ethanamine. The molecular ion peak is at 45, which is consistent with the molar mass of this compound. And the base peak is at 30, which is exactly 15 mass to charge ratios from the molecular ion peak. That's again indicative of this methyl group. So we can expect that these two peaks are produced from the cleavage of the CC bond that is within the ethanamine. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.